So again, it's a bit of a break from the norm on the vlogs. I've not had a chance in the week to do the film and I've been too hands on, busy doing the. There's been lots of sort of requests of, can you do a vlog on this car, can you do a vlog on that car? The cars I've got here is a BMW M140i and next door a Renault Traffic, which is a day van, a very good customer of mine's family bus. Plus uh, one or two things I'd like to maybe touch on, talk on, answer a couple of questions on the Q&A. And here we have a lot of goodies and uh, boxes to open up for mail time. First, what I ought to really do, 20 to two, the Aston Martin you may have spied outside is next week's white detail. It's an Aston Martin Vanquish and the vehicle is about to come inside. Another delivery, this time some G10 goodies, so I'll pack these away and we'll make a start on this lot. I think, think we're about there. BMW Mineral Grey M140i G Technic new car preparation. Through next door is the Renault Traffic. Sats now waiting on collection. It is half past three, that's going out at five. BM's with me till lunch tomorrow that'll be fin well, it's finished now i think these will come into their own valve caps potentially i'll show you what these are for in a future episode there's logic behind them next right this is aha this is a very lance for use with the Kranzel K7 pressure washer, uh, a high flow lance that's adjustable. Mine's taken a few nose dives over the years and as a result needs replacing. Sourced from the same company, uh, an oil seal kit for the Kranzel and we have a water pressure kit. So basically I'm going to service the Kranzel because it's well overdue. So we have O-rings, we have oil seals and water seals, including the recommended oil. I'm told you can just buy 15 weight 40, but for me it was easy to buy the recommended stuff at the time. Although this says Group S, the invoice is for main details. Whether this is public knowledge or not yet, I am unsure and before I air this video, this is information I will have to Confirm with Alan of AM Details. AM Details will be a stockist of the Rupes kit. So if you're in the market for a, a 75 Mini or well, any of the Bigfoot range, any of the Rupes range, then Alan, uh, stocks are quite low, I believe, at the minute, but there's a new stock order going in. So certainly consider if you're buying a Rupes Bigfoot polisher, DA polisher, then AM Details are to be stocking. And this, this will come into its own. Yeah! And we have a, a new apron. That was a bit far too excited about the fact I've got a new apron. The hybrid. It's been around for a while. Again, I'm late on the bandwagon with this one. Ooh, there she is. Basically, it's a big toothbrush to allow you to get into the intricate areas that otherwise you still struggle with 
on the rotary extension bars. You've seen me using the rotary extension bars, the three inch and the five inch bars to bring the body of the rotary polisher away from the body of the car, making it safer. But also you haven't got sort of the angles that this uh, can approach. Probably ought to be charging this first. But yeah, this will be extremely useful. Uh, even on some of the interior details, I'd imagine on some of the polished trim inserts, the piano black. I'm sure this will come into its own and feature on the next couple of vlogs. What's this? Spare battery? Spare battery. Okay, so you can use it on the corded as well. Battery charger. All this will be explored in a later episode. And that's it for the packages, for the parcels. Those that uh, watch the Instagram page, the White Details Instagram, if you see, if you saw the recent, one of the recent story feeds, you will have seen I mentioned about a coating cradle, the White Details coating cradle. When you are coating a car, this for demonstration purposes is water. Uh, I tend to pull the trolley, pull the dolly around the vehicle with me, so I've always got access to the stuff that I need. But it's happened to me dozens of times, hence the reason of trying to plan this out. When you're pulling the trolley around, sometimes the trolley can snag or it can get caught. Sometimes when you're pulling the trolley around, it snags or get caught. You have spillages, you have wastage, and when a, a bottle of Let's say crystal serum, full fat crystal serum, this is crystal serum light or an empty bottle of with water inside of it. You could be spilling 10, 15, 20 quid plus worth of product in the bottle. So the coating cradle allows the bottle to sit snug. You can pick it up and take it with you. It has a stainless bottom without fear of future spillages. So if we crash, also it's been cut with various holes and diameter circles or squares to accommodate different size bottles depending on which system you use. Uh, after the research and testing, I found that on the most part, the 50ml bottles, the 30ml bottles, are pretty much generic throughout the whole range, be it whatever coating manufacturer you're using. These are demonstration purposes only. So give or take a millimeter or two, hopefully everything's contained, everything's safe from spillages. So more information on the coating cradle as the weeks go by. I will feature this in use during the vlog episode for the Aston Martin. There's still one or two final tweets to make, so please bear with me. Pricing, this is gonna be something that's available for purchase. So pricing will be around the sort of 18 pound mark, I think at this time. One or two final tweets to be made, but certainly one to keep an eye out for. And thanks to those that have given me sort of the early interest already on Instagram off the back of the posts that were made on Instagram with the demonstration of sort of the spillages as of what I've just done there. Uh, you've probably seen it now on screen anyway. Yeah, thank you for the support and hopefully it might be something that can benefit or help others because it's certainly something that I've struggled with in the past and get frustrated about that you get spillages. Bear with me there, information, what I have information will be down below. So what I'm gonna do now is running around the mineral gray M140i and next door is the Renault Traffic Dayvan. Those that are on Instagram again will have seen this on the update in the week. It said customers who, I've, I've done their other cars and it was their sort of family bus, their family getaway vehicle, which is pretty awesome actually, uh, Renault Traffic. And he's on the conversion himself. So the, the, the vehicle was bought as a panel van. It's been converted by a company which he doesn't recommend, unfortunately. I would obviously pass on the recommendation for said company, but the customer just one or two things he wasn't quite happy with. It features a, a diesel hob, um, so for the cooking side of things, hot and cold water, 120 litre water tank, fresh water tank. It's got a fridge on board and hot and cold air con system. Sleeps four, two down the bottom, two up top is the high rise, the roof system obviously elevates up, allowing you to stand in there. I like the idea of it, I like the attraction of taking your friends, taking your family, sticking the bikes in the back and enjoying a long weekend or a week in Wales or Cornwall or on the coast or wherever it may be. Certainly something a bit different to have through the doors, but every vehicle deserves the same attention. So be it a hot hatch, be it a van, be it a future classic prestige out on the Aston Martin. What I was gonna do, I just did the sign off speech. Find us on Instagram and support this and like that. But this is meant to be a Q and A and I haven't done it yet. Rattling on as usual. 
Tom Tom on YouTube, great videos and beautifully jobs. Beautifully jobs. What's the light you are using to show all the swirls and the defects on the cars? Uh, Tom referred back to an earlier video episode, I think it was vlog 25, it will flash up at the top any second. They are scan grip, scan grip Sun Match 2 and the Multi Match 2 and the D Match 2. Great system and definitely worth looking into. Andrew Bethel, uh, this is a qu uh, question that's come through on the Audi R8 Spider. Reference the leather wipes. Jim, at any time, does the colour come off with the leather wipes? I think I said in the video that it's, it's down to you to sort of do a test in an inconspicuous area first. On a whole, they are safe, they are nice wipes to use. Uh, assuming the leather is in decent nick or condition in the first place. So I've never had any problems. I've never seen any color transfer or color lift on the wipe away from the surface. The only time you'll have this is if it's a poor repair, if it's had some recoloring. But that said, I've done leather bolsters that have had some recoloring done. And if you were using a stronger chemical or something that's got any caustic in it, like an APC, which you want to avoid, I still see people using the likes of G101 which is an all-purpose cleaner which is great for sort of door shuts and engine bays and wheels and wheel arches but certainly not one to be using on the interior. So the leather wipes uh, always do your own tests don't take my word for it you want to be checking your own uh, process and just because I've said they're great it, it might not be the case for you you have to do your own research. This is an interesting comment it's not so much a question but a comment I'll probably touch on. I am your future 808 comments can't say that word. Um, never mind the new workwear, let's just say. Treat yourself to a new camera that you can lock the focus on. The continual auto-focusing can spoil the video. So currently, yeah, the, the Canon G7X to this camera now. It does tend to, especially at this point when I'm sat talking, the, the background tends to flicker. The camera's always looking for focus, especially when I'm sliding around moving location and I'm sort of off center to the screen. The camera's probably to decide in what's the focus and what's the subject and sometimes misses me. But this is now locked. The focus on this is locked. So if I get in too close, it won't autofocus. If you're too far away, it also won't autofocus. So this camera is one that can be locked and thank you for the tips and thank you for the heads up. I had noticed it, but I'll try to do this more often now to prevent that from happening. Paul Watts, hi Paul, uh, hi Jim. Thank you so much for answering my question about your boots. I apologize, I was not clear. Your, not your steel toe cap shoes that you wear in the shop, but the ones you're wearing when you're washing the car outside. Apologies, Paul, I think I, I thought I touched on that as well, but perhaps I didn't use the footage. The, the boots, the Wellington boots essentially are muck boots. They're blah, muck boots, are they sort of equestrian? background i don't know but the sort of three quarter size wellies basically waterproof boots rubberized boots to keep my little feet warm and dry a u r o asks i'm a new fan and the question i have is can you please tell us about the lift system in your shop the system is great but does it have a safety mechanism to protect from malfunctions which can cause serious bodily harm i've spoken about the lift a couple of times not in recent videos but earlier on it's an automotech 7330 full height three ton low rise so it's sat there in the floor flush i do keep planning when i get time when i get the inclination to record a unit tour video which of course i will speak about the lift in more detail then but i have a link down in the description of the video in the text in the link descriptions uh, to the lift and the manufacturer so you can go check out the specs and safety features it does operate from the compressor this is the tower for the lift which is up and down the, in the lock system and it has pneumatic teeth which it then sits and locks into so there's no danger of the vehicle dropping and collapsing. Good question, Charlie Big Cheese. <laughs> Charlie Big Cheese commented on an earlier video. What's the biggest mistake or learning curve you've made when working on a customer's car? And then there's a couple of comments off the back of that comment by Charlie Big Cheese. Uh, biggest mistake and learning curve. There's been a couple of things, in fact, let's let's be upfront and honest about this that mistakes do happen uh, to the best of us to all of us um sometimes they're unavoidable okay last week's maserati the 1999 quattroporte the green one i'm flashing image of it up now the i couldn't tell you how perhaps it was on its last legs and it was just a matter of time obviously being as careful as i always am with sort of contact and climbing in the cars and maneuvering the cars and the care is there but when i was doing the wash and the cleanse on the outside obviously i'm opening the petrol filler cap to enable me to clean inside and cleanse and flush out all the sort of the dirt that's sat under there for the last 20 25 years with the detail brushes and carefully sort of running the perimeter of the petrol filler nozzle 
I'm lost. I can't, I can't refer back. I can't tell you how it happened. But anyway, I came back to it and said petrol filler cap. The flap wore, had been snapped and the bracket on the arm of the petrol filler cap, uh, leaving it with me in my hands. Now, I've actually got some video footage of this, so I'll flash it up now. You can see how Maserati spares. So this is the original cap that was on this car literally this week. And of course it left me in a bad position. This is Monday, the day, day one of six on the start of a white detail. The car was one that's coming from overseas. And honestly, I couldn't tell you how, I couldn't tell you why. Just very frustrating and obviously left me in a position where I need to do something about it. This of course is where insurance comes in. So when I'm working on the BM, when I'm working on the Aston Martin, I'm covered to work on said vehicles. The costings involved to source a new filler cap, to have it all sprayed up, which I was lucky to do so. I was able to source one in, it in Italy to have it shipped across. I had it painted by a, a trusted body shop to sort of get the colour maps. That was the most important thing there. And when it was sort of bolted back on the car and fixed up, the colour match was great. I was happy. And at that point, I, I videoed this for the customer and said, look, this has happened. Obviously, the filler cap was okay in the first place, but it's now not okay. And as a result of that, I've had, I've gone out of my way. I've sourced a new one. I've had it painted and hopefully all being well, but you should know this information. I could have probably sort of pushed it to one side and swept under the rug and forgotten about it myself but that's not the way to do it it's sort of a it cost me of course it cost me three figures to get these bits and get them painted in the time i'd much rather be honest about these sort of things than sit in the dark and lie about them and hope no one ever spots years ago as a mobile service i was working on another maserati a quattroporte for a friend of a customer and the car had a lot of body work and i was doing the boot lid when the boot lid was polished the edge of the rear wing on the high flat edge was taped off because i don't want to be catching it when i'm cutting in for fear of burning the edge of the panel so i put the masking tape the low tack automotive tape not really assessing the inside boot shut so the the vertical part where you can't see on the exterior of the car but when the boot lid is open the wall the, the shut the jam on the inside the said wing had been painted and said blend mark where the lacquer has been feathered and sort of blended it wasn't the nicest finish it was a bit rough so jim tapes the edges he polishes the boot lid he refines the boot lid he polishes the wing he gets all sorted and all as well but of course when the tape comes off the vehicle on on the on the wing the tape always wants to come back on itself as opposed to sort of pulling upwards you want to come back and lightly pull it away so it's not having to sort of stress or drag the paintwork either way the the tape lifted the, the smallest slither of lacquer off the wing where this bad blend mark had been left. It just takes something like that for me to be conscious and mindful of upcoming jobs and future jobs. It's a mistake and of course we learn from our mistakes. Uh, but someone else has commented on Charlie's question. I was going to ask this too, maybe for your early days, Jim, before you gained your wealth of experience. Have you ever made a mistake that could be rectified by your own skills? Everyone in every industry makes mistakes. I'm sure there are probably smaller things that have happened also. There's a couple of examples, uh, for instance, that yeah, it happened to us all but my attitude towards it is being as upfront and honest about it as possible i am gonna call it there because i have something left to do on the van it's being picked up in half an hour's time this is the second smallest sort of video in a row the maserati last week was more for sort of the, the, the owner's benefit like an after footage compilation of the quattroporte but there's going to be plenty of information to follow in the coming weeks of the Roops Hybrid, the coating cradle, the white details coating cradle. I'll talk on that. I'll touch on that later in another episode. So it just leaves me to, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for the support and the kind comments and feedback that comes through on the various media platforms, be it Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter. And Patreon, uh, thank you to my patrons. 19 uh, i believe now fine is on the platforms mostly instagram there's a link down below in the text as well as all the kits and all the information on the gear and everything i spoke about here today if you've enjoyed the video give it a cheeky thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one